Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Alon Paul here. I'm actually going to be picking up where we left off uh, in our last recording as far as the normal playthrough mode is concerned. Again, this is kind of like an instructional video. Uh, so we'll be, I'll be explaining things as we go along. So I uh, wanted to start right here at this screen in my log. As you can see, we are on the Awakenings primary mission. Um, and we are supposed to establish and construct a base. Once we find a suitable planet, we can display the, the main base computer. And as you know, we, list, we learned those particular um, uh, things last weekend. So we're ready to go with this one. Uh, so let me go ahead and get back out of here. And as you can see, we're on our very hot planet. Now, there wasn't a whole lot of planets to choose from in this particular grouping. Um, you know, here's the planets as they stand. I didn't really search all these planets, but I remember scanning them from space, and really there wasn't a whole lot of other planets that was, you know, left to choose from. I could have went with stuck on uh, planet Bob if I wanted to. Uh, really didn't make much of a difference. But you notice that they have a high sentinel activity on this planet, whereas this one doesn't mention the sentinels much. So I expect there to be just a kind of a medium presence with them that they're not going to go. Uh, crazy every single time we try to mine something. So I thought this would be a better option. There's a little bit of water on this planet as well, which will give me an option later on in certain tasks. So that's where we're going to stand with this one. Um, so I decided to go ahead and create the base here. As you can see, it looks like I've already got a base created, and my base computer should be by this exit. I love creating my bases near these um, uh, these particular uh, what is this thing called? Minor settlement. Jeez, having one of those days. Uh, next to a minor settlement because they have the ability for me to have access to a trade terminal. Uh, when things reset every week or so, I can gather up the nanites here uh, and get extra nanites from them. Uh, they've got an air, a guy I can trade with and get more uh, items. The best part about this guy is the items that he sells. The components, if you will, are things that you might actually need. Granted, it's not in great quantities. You know, one here, three there. You got a one wiring loom here, but it's handy when you need them, and that's the best part. You're probably not going to use these much, but those microprocessors, having three of them at this this particular location, I don't have to go up to the space station to get them now. I can grab three here when I need them. Uh, solar mirror you might need on a particular item, and there's usually only a little bit here, but you do have magnetic resonators. You'll be needing that down the road a ways. A quantum computer, excellent to have that. I can pick up salvage data if I need an extra one. They are also selling exosuit upgrade charts here, but very expensive, of course. Um, I'm not going to be getting those. And you got some other items that we really don't need right now, but it's very handy. Plus, it gives me the ability to sell stuff that's in my own inventory uh, for later on. So that's where we stand with this at the moment. That's why I like creating something near a minor settlement. So it gives me also the ability to hide when I need to. Now, we've already created the base computer. Okay. Now, the next option, when we actually go to it, you can see the icon is floating above it that's telling us we need to interact with it. So we're going to do that. Accessing log from previous user. Entry 4925D follows. Storms sweeping across, but construction supplies low. Depositing shelter plans while need to back soon. So obviously the signal gets interrupted. Now there's a couple reasons behind why that keeps happening. It may be because it's an old recording and it's degraded, or something's trying to interrupt key elements in the signal so you're not getting all the details behind the story. Uh, I tend to lean towards that latter one because I really think that there's someone out there that's interrupting the signal a little bit. That they've done this purposely to these signals, to these plans, so that you're not getting the whole story. And I think they have an ulterior motive behind all that. So, hey, it seems pretty deep for a game like this, but you know what? It's not as deep as you think, and honestly, it just gives you more to go by. So what did we get? We got an angled door, timber wall, floor panel, flat timber roof, and a floor containment unit which we're not really going to be using those. And there's our guidance alert telling us we need to build a base. Okay, So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, the thing that's going to happen here, and it happens every single time you play the game, you notice that there's been no storms except for that one time, right? Well, as soon as you build this place, as soon as you get enough of these timber floor panels on the ground, you're going to have a storm appear. 
So before I do so, there's one thing I need to check on. I have carbon, let's see here. I've got 297. It takes 10 to create a panel. So I'm going to be creating six floor panels, so that's 60. Uh, so you're going to have the wall panels, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten panels I'll have to have around the outside. One, some of those will have to be replaced by doors. So it's 160 carbon I'm going to need, plus the six above, so that's 220. So I have just enough carbon to get this done. Um, problem is, is that to create the doors, I'm also going to need some, not ferrite dust, but pure ferrite. So if you look at the build menu, it's Z on your keyboard for those who are PC builders. You'll notice that this takes 10 carbon. So do the walls, right? 25 carbon. Oh, so I'm not going to have enough carbon to build all the walls I need. Yeah, I'll have to redo that. But the doors require 10 pure ferrite. And I want to create at least four doors, one on each side. So I'll need 40 pure ferrite. So I'm going to actually do that now. I'm going to go to my build menu, drop my portable reactor down here. And I'm going to create 40 pure ferrite. Uh, ferrite dust. We just need 40 of it. And we'll get that going. Now I need carbon. What's carbon? Looks like this is a carbon right here. I've got to get my mining beam out. And this is going to be a while because these don't give a whole lot of carbon. We've got some ferrite dust out here. We can just keep going for a little while here and just suck up all the minerals that are all over the ground here. Okay. Hmm. Salt? Oh, that's a first. I've never seen an element a mineral on a planet that its primary element was salt when you're not underwater. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay. Well, that might come in handy later. Salt is a good element. Um, how well do you know your periodic table, folks? Salt is what? We know what the... what salt is as far as its um, elemental description is it's sodium chloride correct so what would happen if you put salt in a refiner I should have a little bit of salt on me so I'll show you pure ferrite let's go to the salt that we picked up we only have four but look what it turns into chlorine isn't that interesting let's do that why do I want that look at how much it's valued at 200 units each it's very interesting, isn't it? Why is that important? Well, this is 28 units each. Copper, 41 units each, right? Let me go ahead and get what I need out of that. Even chromatic metal is only at 88 units each. Okay, now granted these are items that we pick up, but all of these items are not worth nearly, nearly as much including cobalt as much as chlorine at 200 units each. This is an early money-making item. And if you combine chlorine with oxygen, you get twice as much. You get actually a lot more chlorine. Uh, for every two units of this and one unit of that, you get six chlorine. So it's a three to six ratio from, the, from those items. Very, very handy. So I advise that you look into that as an early money-making skill. I got 444 carbon. I should have enough. That's going to give me some more carbon. I got another 100 out of it. So it should be enough to create my base. Let's go ahead and do it, and you'll see what happens when I talk about, you know, here comes the storm. Now, I like to create my base right outside this particular door. So I'll put my center panel right about here. Now, in this mode, you're looking around, you're moving your character around. If you hit the B button on your keyboard, you get into a zoom out mode where you can then go into a different atmosphere. Your character stays put and you can build your base as you go. So I'm going to try to line it up as best I can. I'm not going to be perfect here. I am not Beeble Bum, folks. Three, four. I can't build it where I'm standing. Six, you see? There's the weather warning. Let's pull back a little bit. So the storm's going to be pretty severe. It's going to drop me like a rock. But if we are quick, 
we should be able to get this done. Now what I'm going to try to do is go here, stand inside the doorway, hit the letter B outside the doorway, and I'm going to go and build some walls. I'm going to put one there. I think I'll put one caddy corner to it there. I'm going to build one over there and caddy corner to that one. Uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Here we go. One more. One more. So that means one, two, three, four openings. Okay, let's build the doors. One, two, three, and four. And now we need to do the roof. I like this one just because it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to pull up. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We now have ourselves a little makeshift base and we're done building. Now, one thing I also want to do is I'm going to move my base computer. Okay, you can do that now. Version 4.0, I think they started doing that. I don't know if they did it in an earlier version, but I'm pretty sure they did it in 4.0. If you go into the build menu and hit the letter C, as you can see at the bottom, edit placed parts, you hit the C, you can now pick up an item and move it. So I'm going to move it here and put it down right there. Did I put it backwards? I did. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Come on, spin around, spin around, spin around, spin around. Let's see if that did it. Eh, close enough. Alright, I like that. That's okay. That's okay. I can deal with that. Alright, so let's see what we need to do. Let's interact with it. Accessing log from previous unit. Additional archives recovered. Entry 4925E follows. Construction largely a success. Recovered salvaged data from nearby. Data? Data? Plans logged. Scans indicate additional subterranean devices. Beginning search. Extract the plans. Whoever recorded these logs evidently had some success. I have access to their plans, and perhaps I can learn from their efforts. So I get the construction research unit. It gives you a little bit of construction, but it helps in other ways at the very, very beginning. You won't need it later on, but for now, we need it. So that's my next option. I got to build that. So to build it, as it says down below, go back to my build menu, I need 20 magnetized ferrite and a carbon nanotube. Now the carbon nanotube, simple enough to build in our menu. We got plenty of carbon right now. So let's go ahead and make the carbon nanotube. So we got that ready, but we need magnetized ferrite. Now to get magnetized ferrite, and how much do we need again? Just because I'm stupid and forgot, 20. So to do that, we gotta get our portable refiner back out. I'm just gonna stick that uh, over here. I'll stick it over here for now. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put more condensed carbon in because it's turning into carbon every time I use it. Now, we already know that ferrite dust, when you wanna make pure ferrite, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. But magnetized ferrite is a two, uh, two to one ratio from pure ferrite. So obviously if we need 20 magnetized ferrite, we're going to need 40 pure ferrite. So I'm not going to cut that in half. I'm just going to drop this down to 40. Now we could buy it. We could go inside and buy it from the terminal, but we're going to go ahead and for the purposes of what we're trying to do, I'm just going to do it right here. Okay. So ferrite dust, I'm going to put this back in my exosuit, take the ferrite dust, and you'll see 2 to 1. So we get 20 magnetized. Just takes a few seconds, and gone. A little something about refiners. Uh, these small ones use fuel. The one in your that you can build as part of your um, backpack assembly also uses fuel. But when you get to medium and large refiners, they don't use fuel anymore, and they're very, very efficient. Once you build one, you're done. You don't need to ever use fuel again for anything. Um, the thing about this is if I leave this here and I leave something in here to refine and I leave the planet and go do something, unless they finally fix the bug, there's a small bug that says that you may come back and find that this is empty and this is empty, that your items that you put in there are gone. So keep that in mind. Try not to leave the planet and leave your refinery 
behind. Even if you go to another part of the planet, there's a, there's a chance that that could happen. So I'd say take your portable refiner with you wherever you go. So let's go ahead and build our construction unit. That should look good. And the, 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 the weather warnings are going to start happening frequently. Uh, they may happen a little less infrequently later on, but on a planet like this that's already got bad weather to begin with, you're going to have this happen frequently. So let's go into our construction unit. What do we need? Let's see, analysis unit online, diagnostic suggestion. Users should recover salvage data from buried technology. Equip and utilize an analysis visor. I can't believe I almost said that wrong. So we have two different areas of research, buildable technology or structures. Really, it doesn't make a difference which one you start at. You can get to the other one pretty easily. So let's go buildable technology. Now I've got in my inventory four salvage data. I can get myself a base teleport module, which is what they're wanting you to do. So I've got that now. Four metal plates, two carbon nanotubes, uh, carbon nanotubes, and some sodium. Now we also need to f to be able to power this device. So you may want to get other things, but you definitely need to get a biofuel reactor. I have enough to get that, and that's going to require another metal plate and some oxygen. And you'll notice that electrical wiring doesn't cost anything. It is an an item that they're giving to you, but you have to learn it. You're going to need that. You have other things later on you can get. You can get a signal booster. This comes in handy in finding things. You will need it later. You'll find out. I can also get myself a battery, which can store energy. And I can get myself a solar panel, which can obviously take only energy during the day and power devices. The thing about the solar panels, it's a very handy one to have. I would recommend getting one at your earliest convenience. Uh, there is another type of power module you can get. We'll go over that when we get to the anomaly that you can only get up there. But the solar panel is a great early game power device. Combined with a battery, you're in really good shape no matter where you land on a planet. So you won't really need, uh, need much after that. Um, you can also get yourself a health station that re it gives you one health packet and will give you one heart back later on. And it keeps, after about 30 seconds, it'll re-put a new, a new canister in there. So you can obviously, if you've lost two of your three hearts, you can just wait a little bit and get your second canister and boost yourself back up. Hazard protection units I just find kind of useless. That's if your shield goes out. But your shield, after about 30 seconds to a minute or so, will auto-recharge. So I, I don't see any reason to have one of these. So I have one salvage unit, unit left. I'm going to hang on to that because I want to save it. I want to get two more to get a battery just to begin with. So before I actually build these units, I want to get this. So first things first, we need to run manipulator. The storm is clearing. Let's look around to find some very technology. It's 300 units away, 300. Uh, it's a building over there. Interesting. Buildings normally will have another technology unit buried someplace. Up on the hill over there, 228. We'll come back and get it. Okay, let's just go to this one. It's not too much further than the rest. So, okay, time to run. So, again, short bursts like we've done many times in the past. Nope, that plant is not carbon. Okay, I was just curious. Again, I love at night that you can get, that you can find all these plants because they glow and you can find them so much easier than anything else. Now, I haven't seen any um, sentinels for some reason. I don't know if they're just not present on this planet. You know, a lot of times you can actually look through your visor at the planet real quick and it will tell you. We'll, we'll do that here in a second. Sentinels absent, it says. I don't always believe that because I usually think that their sentinels are going to show up whether we like it or not. I'm stuck. Okay, here we go. That they're going to show up no matter what as we're trying to get stuff. And uh, I don't always believe when it says that they're completely absent, especially if you get other planets in the system that have these things. Or you're not in a galaxy where they're a little bit less uh, uh, populous, if you will. So, anywho, um, okay, should be right up here. Let me turn on my light. There we go. 
Now, if you're playing the game new, the light will turn off and on automatically. I have mine turned off so that I can activate it on my own. So how many do we get? Just two? Early game, I think you only get two at a time. Yeah. You can get as many as four and in one shot when things are working out for you. 128, 304. I might just head that direction over there. Sounds like we got another ship coming in. Oh, there they are. Yep. Oop. Okay, that was kind of a failed attempt at a run jump. There we go. That's a little better. Oh, I forgot I had the... Hey, jerk. I don't like you. Oh, okay. We got a double whammy here. So we get the technology. Salvage data. We'll get two more. And we got a buried cache. Let's see what's in it. A suspicious starship shield module. Isn't that neat? The suspicious ones are pretty cool because they can be they won't be worth a whole heck of a lot if you trade them at the station. It says 336, but you're probably only going to get about 40, 50, 60 out of it. Uh, the stations don't usually like to um, give you too much for those because they're suspicious. Um, but it can be pretty neat to put that in your starship. You may get something more than what you normally get even from an S-Class. So it's worth actually you know, hanging on to it. Um, let's see. 247. I want to go ahead and gather some more. I would like to get the, the, the solar panel. Wow, daytime already? Uh, turn off my light. All right. Been a very busy week for me to, this week. I actually broadcasted last weekend. As I said, I think on my last broadcast, I had to have some dental surgery done. I'm doing a lot better this time. Um, not having as much of a problem anymore uh, with it. I've got some appointments coming up, so. But I seem to be doing a lot better. Uh, kids are pretty much over all their illnesses for the most part. Um, unfortunately, my son ended up with a ear infection from his. Uh, out with um, the flu so he's on some medication right now but he's doing a lot better uh, but everybody else seems to be healthy at the moment uh, I don't believe in knocking on wood or luck or anything like that but I'm just gonna say I hope for the best that's it uh, how much do I have now there we go seven I'll need eight and then three more for the battery so I think that's really all I want right now. So let's go for four more. I'll need to find two more caches, if you will. There's one over there I know. All right, let me go to that one. Okay. So kind of a crazy week. But, you know... Like I said before in my last broadcast, there are people out there going through a lot more hardship than we are, and, you know, huh, what do you know, another one. And uh, I, I'm just happy that we are as healthy as we can be, uh, that we have roof over our head, clothing on our back, food on the table. You know? Ooh, a crack chip. What did we get for that? It's not worth 98 units, but you see we can dismantle that. So sometimes you get items from these boxes that will be very interesting. So what do we get? It gave us some emerald. Ooh, well, crap. Wow, that's really good. I may be going for more of those things in the future. That's very handy. There's a couple different things I can do with that. I'm going to hang on to that. I would turn it into chromatic metal because I want to say that the ratio is... It's either a 2 to 1 ratio. I know it's better than 1 to 1. Indium, I think, gives you a 3 to 1 ratio, but I don't quite remember. I'd have to look at it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. More projectiles. Just what I need. I got a life support module, though. That's pretty good. Okay. All right. I need to take a look around real quick, and I need to get one more cache. Oh, there's one up there. 324, 381. Let's go to the 324 one. Okay. You notice I'm not concentrating too heavily on 
the money portion of things that I'm not trying to go for a ton of credits I could sit here and I could uh, I know that a couple other streamers will you know off camera will go ahead and start making tons and tons and tons of credits just so they have some extra credits built up I'm trying to do this as pure as possible um, I don't want to cheat the system so to speak and give myself three you know 30 million credits all of a sudden it's also why I've turned off the um, what do you call it? Multiplayer mode. I'm going to go through this way. Because my thermal shield is dropping like a rock. So, Okay, I thought you'd give me 11, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, 11. So that's all I need. Make this bigger. Oh, where's my ship at? Hello, ship. That way. Here's another tip. If you really don't have any sodium and you're in a really extreme planet, you're in a storm or something like that, and you can't really uh, get where you need to go, uh, consider just digging a tunnel. Because your shield is arrested at that point. You won't have to um, weather the weather, if you will and you can just make your way underground all the way to a location now on extreme planets if you're trying to get to the extreme planet um, achievement which is 20 days 30 days 30 days on a extreme weather planet you can spend it underground the whole time and it will still count so hello welcome back Everything's low. I know, I know. Oh, was it 10,000? 8,000. Wow, okay. Losing track of where I'm at. Oh, there's one over here. Uh, I'm not going to grab that. Let's grab this first, because it's reset, obviously, since the last time I've been here. Once a week, usually, that resets the area. So holes that you dug and stuff like that. If you created a base, ladies and gentlemen, and you had to clear some ground, you come back a week or, week or two later in, in, in real life time, you will most likely find all the ground you cleared is now overwhelming your base and you have to re-clear it. So I like to build my bases up on stilts when I can get those and get them off the ground. So just a little advice only you can do whatever you want you can build it into the ground and have to dig it out every single time I leave it up to you oh, I guess I learned some words yay you learned words It'd be great if it happened in real life you know you're two or three years old and you you suddenly say a new word and a big huge achievement suddenly lights up the sky above you learned five words yeah, that'd be kind of really weird I think Good job, Mom and Dad. Doo -doo -doo. I still haven't done it yet. I was going to start playing music in the background and stuff like that, too. But I haven't done that just yet. Um, let's take that gel. There we go. I'll use that now. All right. So we've got what we need. Let's go ahead and go to the terminal and learn things buildable technology so we're gonna pick up the battery we're gonna pick up the solar panel and we're done now I'm not gonna build the solar panel yet why is that Paul well the reason for that is because it requires a little bit this one requires 30 gold I don't have any gold uh, I could go find gold, I could go get gold in space, I can get gold at a space station if they sell it there. I'm not going to worry about it yet. I'm going to go with the base components here. I just wanted to have them in my inventory learned so I have them. I will build one of these. I like to have a battery just in case something happens. So we're going to get 60 magnetized ferrite and we need 100 condensed car carbon, which we've got. Uh, here's my portable refiner. Oh, you see it retained everything this time. So I need 100 magnetized ferrite, correct? So I'll need, let's try that again, I'll need 200, there we go, begin, 
And while I'm waiting on that, I need some metal plates. Now I could make them in my inventory, but I know that they sell them in here. I'll need five of them. So I'll go ahead and buy them. I have a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. There we are. Yeah, they only got 11 though. Five. There we go. They got uranium. I'm going to go ahead and grab that while I can because that's great for starting f for uh, launch fuel for your ship. Mm, do I need anything else? I don't think I do. They don't have a lot. This must not be a very rich system, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Since these recharged, I'll go ahead and grab them. Very handy, isn't it? Okay, so we should have our magnetized ferrite. Nope, not yet. That's right, I gotta finish that up. Bink, bink, bink. Let that go. So we need a pair of carbon nanotubes. One, two. Let's go ahead and take care of this. Let's see what what we can get out of it. Uh, what's the shield at? Yeah, only 17. Yeah, an S-Class will give you 30, but hey, it's better than nothing for now. So we'll leave it in there for the time being, and uh, just, you know, later on we can get rid of it. It'll give us some items out of there, too. Uh, while I'm here, uh, let me take the uranium and put it in my starship. Oh, I got that, too. I didn't know that. Okay, well, whatever. I'll leave that there. All right. Uh, you're done. Okay, so now I can build things. We're going to build the teleport module. I'm going to put it in one of these corners over here. That looks pretty good. And like I said, rather than building that other item, I it needs to be powered, so I have to build a biofuel reactor, one metal plate, which we got, and 25 oxygen. we got plenty of that. I'll just stick it right here. Um, unlike um, a generator in real life that you should always put outside, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, of the carbon monoxide it can produce and kill you, this one I can build inside because we're in a game. And you notice here's the wire, the electrical wiring. You're taking it from one of the points that are on there and you're running it into there. Now before I do that, I'm going to add one more item to this. Let me move this over. I made a mistake. Uh, let's see. Let me just move you to the side a little bit. Okay. Because I want to build a battery, which I now have. The, oh, it only needed 60 magnetized ferrite. Well, I made a mistake there. So I'm going to build a battery and put it right next to the unit there. Electrical wire from here to there. Now, let me show you what happens here. So it says that the battery is depleted and there's no energy in it. Biofuel reactor is giving this um, exclamation point, to be, uh, pardon me, exclamation point to indicate that its furnace is empty. What will it take for fuel? Now they have since fixed the biofuel reactor now and it, it becomes extremely efficient. Um, used to be that you just put some items in, like if I put 40 oxygen in, it would take, it would deplete it in five minutes. Now I get 50 hours of life out of this thing. Okay, so grid power is going up, the battery storing the energy. So that's great. Now I can put a switch on this in order to turn it off and on, but I don't have that yet. I can't get that until I get to the anomaly. So let's power this up. I will run it to the front and we now have a working portal. Love what they've done with the graphics on this. It looks so cool. Really neat. But you see the battery is still storing, so we're not using as much energy. The brilliance behind a lot of these things now is that I can go into this battery and it can tell me how much power is being used, how much is available, so my biofuel reactor is producing 50 kp and I'm only using 20. So I'm us using more than I've got available to myself. And it's great for producing all kinds of different uh, farms and things like that. It's always a good idea to keep an eye on what kind of power you got. This battery should be able to store, if I remember correctly, it's 45,000. 48,000? I don't quite remember. Uh, we'll see it in a little bit here. And it says it's going to take about 24 minutes to completely charge at 30 kps, which is the leftovers, as you can see. So, 
fabulous. That way, if this thing ever runs out of power, this will trickle charge this thing until I can put more fuel in my biofuel reactor. Now, if I get a solar panel, it'll charge this battery up at 50 kp, uh, except at dawn and dusk, which it drops to 25. But it's still enough to power this and still trickle charge the battery at the same time. So once that's fully charged, at night when the solar panel closes up, it'll deplete some of the battery. And then the next morning when the solar panel reopens, it recharges everything. So now I have a way to get back and forth wherever I need to go. Very interesting. And you'll see how handy that can be later on. I'm going to pick up my refiner while I'm thinking of it. Uh, I now unfortunately have 40 magnetized ferrite in my inventory, but I'll hang on to that. Let me put this in my starship to get it out of the way. I'm going to put this in my starship to get it out of the way. I don't have a gun, correct? No. So I really don't need that yet. So I'll probably sell that. Let me put this in my starship too. I don't need that on my, on my person. Okay, I think we got enough. Got batteries, cobalt, got the little bit of chlorine. I'll go ahead and put that in the ship. Keep the navigation data because it's very handy to have that when you want to call your ship to you. And I'll just stick this down here for now. We got enough inventory space. I'm not too, too concerned. All right. Uh, nanites, 4,000. Pretty good. Okay. All right. Our next objective is to rename my base. So we go up here. Rename. Okay, hang on just a second. Okay, need to pause for just a moment, folks. I'll be right back. And we're back. Yeah, that's... Uh, got a reminder from somebody of the fact that I needed to... Uh, that was interesting that I needed to go to a wedding reception this evening, so I wanted to look that up real quick. So we're almost a half hour into this, so I'm gonna go ahead and rename the base. Now I'm a pretty pragmatic person when it, pragmatic person when it comes to naming things. I don't go crazy with the names. I do something very, very simple. I use my initials, and I always name the base something very, very simple. This is gonna be more like a pre-base. I would like to find a paradise planet to put my base on. So this is just gonna be a very simple pre-base. So we'll name it. Prebase Alpha. Okay, so accept. And we have now fancy music. We powered the base. See, it's going through everything on the bottom right, telling me everything I did. I, I, I guess I jumped ahead just a little bit after renaming the base. I've explored, expanded the base. I could continue on right now, but at any second, it's going to come up with a new task. And there it is. So. What would you like? Accessing log from previous user. Additional archives recovered. Entry 4925F follows. Scanner detected unusual broadcast. Repeating 16 from the space station. Warning. End of the archive. Records interrupted. The base computer archives have reached their end. It seems there is nothing more I will learn from them. My predecessor appears to have left their base and headed to the space station. Leave. Now, very interesting how the archives end, but you will be coming back to this base later on to the uh, uh, to your base computer in order to do some things later on. But for now, we're going to investigate the space station. Now, normally at this point, you notice I when I went to the space station earlier, I couldn't see it per se in my field in in the radar. <clears throat> pardon me, on the ship, it didn't direct me towards it. But let me show you what we're talking about. Blast off. What an interesting planet. I love this. So we're going to go straight up. We go into space. And you notice at the bottom left corner there's a, what looks like a hexa, uh, hexagon. That's pointing to the space station. We didn't have that earlier. Now we do. So the space station is right there. Line up. Pulse drive. Boom. And we're on our way, baby. And so now we can come and go to the space station at will. We don't have to fly there, though. Why? Because we've produced our own portal on our base. A little teleporter, if you will. Ah, oh, man, the graphics are so much better now. They've really done a, a number on uh, upgrading some of the 
uh, appearances that you see in the game. Really, really like that. So exploring the space station, find life forms to ask about the mysterious signal. Okay. Exit my ship. Most of the folks are over here. Let's go on up. All right. Well, here's a, here's a guy. Let's ask him. Scout. Grah. Interloper. The Viking. Blah, 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 blah. Alien. Uh, pardon me. The alien, large and intimidating, seems to be attempting to be friendly. Perhaps they know the one who came before me? Ask about other travelers. The alien draws back, startled. The look on their face tells me our conversation is over. Explore the space station, find more life forms. Now it says we visited him, so we're going to go find somebody else. Let's go... here's another one. Let's talk to him. Enforcer Ukin. Blah blah blah, interloper, blah blah blah. Interloping. Yada yada yada. The life form puffs themselves up as I approach, making the most of their impressive size. Perhaps they might recognize the signal mentioned by the base computer. Ask about 16. Hearing the code seems to cause the life form to shrink, a look of fear crossing their face. And then, in an instant, the fear passes. They look at me strangely, but say nothing more. Okay, this is getting kind of weird, isn't it? All right, where's that other dude? I'm going to ignore the uh, dude there. Let's go find somebody else. All right, let's ask this guy here. I already talked to him. How weird. Warrior. Warrior Sib. He's got to be pretty good, right? The... Yeah, I'm not even going to try this, folks. It sounds like I'd be just having a coughing fit if I read all that. Despite their size, the alien does not seem aggressive. But when I blink, I see that same red light that stared at me at the, dis at the distress beacon. Repeat 16. We are watching you, traveler friend. Find what we have left you. Though the alien speaks, the words are not their own. A string of code is echoed back to me through the red glare, logged directly to my exosuit. The crimson light fades away, and I see the life form glaring at me. Whatever has happened, they do not appear to have witnessed it. I should leave. Perhaps my base computer would be able to make something of this code? Leave. Yeah, that's one of the creepiest ones of the whole thing, is when, when these life forms get taken over like this. So we now have unlocked space stations. We're told we can go to the space station. We can visit cartographers, do upgrades. It's telling us a lot about the station and what we can do. But it says at the very end we can use the teleporter to instantly return to our base. Hey, look, a teleporter. And it's directing us there. So let's head to the teleporter and do exactly like it says. And now you can go to your bases. You can go to all. So any system you visit will show in here. And you'll show space stations and other bases, and you can show groups and stuff like that. And you can actually designate just your own bases, or you can designate only space stations. So, obviously, we're going to go to our base in the current system, it tells us. Warp there. And special effects. there we go so now we're at our base and you see now the good news is that takes that takes what 10 seconds I guess give or take if we go back to the base to the space station from here our ship always follows so uh, that's the fun part is our ship will not end up on a landing pad you notice it just ended ended up out here in an open field so later on we're gonna build a landing pad out here of our own so we can utilize the takeoff from there so let's go to the base station 45 minutes in. Okay. Archives terminated. Select new task. Begin decryption. Decoding. 16. 16. 16. Message follows. The traveler finds their wings. Fly to us and claim your place among the stars. Okay. Signal acquired and life signs detected. So we're going to go ahead and find this signal. We're going to be uh, shutting down here in just a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and find that signal. We need to get to our ship. It's saying the signal is that way. It's 18 minutes away if I walk. We'll go ahead and take our radiant pillar. 
Um, oh, that's weird. And I'm at 25% of my launch thrusters. While I'm thinking of it, I'm going to go ahead and recharge those with uranium. Okay. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah, I don't want to run into them. Cool. Anyway, let's go there. Now, how long will it take to get there? One minute. Let's put our rocket boosters on, and now it's going to take us about 20 seconds. So rather than going to the atmosphere at 20 seconds, I really don't care. All right. Oh, what do you know? That's interesting to find that. I'm not going to attack any of those or, or, or check any of those out yet. Oh, look at this. Now, this is approximate location, but I guarantee you it's taking us here. So we're going to utilize this landing pad at this crashed freighter site. You will find a lot of these crashed freighters around the systems. Many, many Planets have many of these. Uh, very handy because there are items here you can get. But it's directing us to this particular object that is part of the ship or was part of the ship. Wings of the Anomaly freighter terminal. Log damage, partial records available. The signal has led me to the wreck of a freighter, colossal fragments of metal scattered across the landscape. Were these messages nothing but the misfiring circuits of a long forgotten ruin? Nestled among the debris, I find the pilot's log, blinking, awaiting input. Request the log. Instead of displaying the ship's log, the terminal spits out a strange sequence of numbers. They are followed by a short message. The anomaly comes for the stars. Take flight. A schematic for a hyperdrive is attached to the end of the message. I'm going to take the blueprint. Blueprint. I pull the blueprint from the computer, but this hyperdrive blueprint is for a conventional starship, not a freighter of this size. Someone placed this here after the crash, hoping it would be found. And there's our hyperdrive. So we did 125 chromatic metal and 5 microprocessors to build this. So we need more chromatic metal. There's no way around that. So we'll need, what, uh, not 50, but 49 more chromatic metal. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to go ahead and drop my refiner down real quick. I need 49 chromatic metal, which, where's my copper? Uh, you know, let's just, eh, I'll just do 49, I'm not going to go worry about it right now. I could probably use as much as I can get. So let me let me, let me change this up a little bit. Okay. Oh, I hate that. It's just going to do that because it'll waste that one piece. I told you guys about that before. There we go. Let's let that roll. While that's rolling, I'm going to show you a little something about these freighters. Now the freighters have a couple entrances. They have an area over here and an area over there that contain above ground cargo containers. Use your mining beam to get in. I always open up the other door while I'm at it. And as you get close to it, you'll be able to check out the cargo pod. Uh, in the past, you used to have to add elements to it. Now you can just eliminate what's on it. Now, once you eliminate it, the cargo pod's going to open. It's going to give you what it needs, but it's also going to activate a radiation surge. So you need to get out of the room as quickly as possible because it can damage you fast. And you get it and run. See? And I've got out of the way. Now what did I get out of that? I got myself a nice little antimatter. And that is really handy. Okay, let's go into the next room. And we'll get these two. So we'll get these two and get what we can get out of them. And that is going to be very, very handy. And this time we get a lot of credits. 70,000. See, the radiation dropped quite a bit. All right, there's three more. There's one in this general area right here. I'm going to blast away the top surface here so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Look for the broken panel right there. A lot of guys will dig underneath instead, but I like to go from the top. Switch back over to my terrain manipulator, and you can see that there's the cargo container right there. I get one shot, and look at that. Now I can access it from right here. And I'm already on the surface, so I don't have to run far. Starship launch fuel. Okay. 
and there's another one right here directly underneath that you can see the outline right there once you reveal the front of it you can open up the cargo pod so that's the second one there's actually two more after this so there's a total of six not five I got some nanites out of that one. Only get 20, but you know, it is what it is. There's one more over on this side. Need your terrain manipulator, of course. Widest beam. Ah, I hate that. Didn't mean to turn that on. Widest beam setting, please. And it's right in line with that. It's about in this general direction. I kind of know where it is, so I know where to find it. So, there you go. So, we get this one. There's always four of them on the ground. Another antimatter. Oh, that's handy. Good deal. All right. Now, if you're just wondering, if you're not quite sure where they're located, if you use your visor, you can see them right here. See cargo pod? So that's how you find them. And so the last one, obviously, as you just saw, is all the way over here. It's inside this area. I just stand on the edge of the metal here and go straight down. And it should be right there. Okay. Last cargo pod. Be great to get an antimatter containment shell. If I get some more data, Starship launch fuel. Another item I really don't care to use. Anyway, whatever. Let's pick you up. We'll get your carbon. We're going to get our chromatic metal. And we're going to get our unit back. Before we go back to our ship, let's rearrange things. I don't need this here. This goes in my starship. Uh, this can stay here. This goes in my starship. I'll need that later. All right, so now we have 317 chromatic metal. Let's go back to the ship, and it wants us to build our hyperdrive. Um, I'm going to put it right there. Click install technology. We can do our teleport receiver, but I'll do that another time. We got animator now, but we need wiring looms, and I don't want to work on that right now. So we have chromatic metal, but we need four more microprocessors. Okay. We exit. Tells us to acquire the components and purchase the microprocessors. Okay. So where do we find them? Space station. Let's go to the space station, shall we? Buy microprocessors from a space station, it says. And instead of giving us that little hexagon, it's just giving us the uh, mission connection here. There we go. There. On our way. And like I said, we're going to get as far as building this, and then we're going to call the broadcast done. And we'll pick up where we left off next time. So hopefully you learned something from all this. I mean, there's a lot to learn in this game. It can be a lot of fun. Um, especially if you're a geek or a nerd and you like this kind of thing. You like technology, you like space, you like fantasy it's it could be so much more fun uh, to go through all this I'm also gonna see if I can't have if I I should have time I'm gonna see if I don't have time to do myself a permadeath broadcast here very shortly so I might release two videos this weekend alright let's get our four more microprocessors I should have enough credits to get them now I just picked up about 60,000 more from the ship yeah yeah we got plenty alright we need four Whoop, four 110,000. Done. Is there anything else we need here while we're at it? Yeah, let's grab the uranium. We won't need much more than that. Now that we've got about 500, 600 uranium, we're set for pretty much the entire game. It's good to have tritium, too. If you can get pyrite, it'll also um, help greatly on your ship as far as the hyperdrive recharge is concerned. Hyperdrive? Pulse drive? Pulse drive. Pulse drive is concerned, not the hyperdrive. Hyperdrive is strictly antimatter. Okay, so let's go to the ship. All right, and there we go. Five microprocessors. We're completed. If I let, just wait a moment. Kicks me out. And there's the special music indicating my hyperdrive is now complete. So we're going to be going to our first system next. I am literally five minutes short of an hour at this point, five and a half. So why don't we go ahead and do that? We have to crap a fuel. We need to find an antimatter recipe. Let's see if we can do that real quick. 
it's telling me about it. Auto diagnostic risk report, hyperdrive successfully installed, hyperdrive fuel status empty. My hyperdrive is complete, perhaps I really will find answers out there amidst the stars. But without warp cells, I will be going nowhere. I need to find a source of antimatter. Tune the scanner to antimatter. So what do we do? Search your antimatter traces with the Starship scanner, C, and we're already tuned. So we're going to exit the, the space station. We're going to hit C, which is scanning out. Antimatter trace detected. Follow the sign. There it is, all the way on my left. Gee, is that on planet Bob? I believe it is. Nope, unknown. Let's scan it while we're here. We scanned it earlier, but if you haven't land on the planet, landed on the planet, it won't remember your scan. So you literally have to land on a planet to remember it. Uh, fungal mold, copper, ammonia, and salt. Very interesting. I'm not sure if we're going to need anything from this planet, but it's nice to know that that's what it has. Bicestal. Interesting name. Okay. I always like to orient myself like that. I have no idea why. I can't land sideways. I just... It's almost like flying upside down on a planet like this and trying to fly upside down with the ground above you. It just, it, my whole setting is off. Now it says it's approximate location. It wants you to find a building. Um, anybody see a building nearby? Yeah. A little too obvious, right? Now these buildings are abandoned buildings and they will not have landing pads. So you will have to land outwards and aside from them and there we go. Now, great thing about these buildings they got these eggs these whispering eggs um, very handy now some of the broadcasters uh, like Jason plays and them will tell you to take these things and turn them into nanites I already said before my favorite way to get nanites is to go ahead and get um, try to find all the animals on a particular planet because that's the easiest way to get them the larval cores that you get from these things are I'm going to learn a word real quick uh, the larval cores you get from these things are worth so much money it's, it's much better to do that this broadcast is going to go a little longer because I'm going to show you all that so let's go ahead and get the corrupted terminal let's get rid of the goop on it and let's follow the the words here terminal online selecting key decrypting success the terminal is clogged with an unnerving pulsating slime Nevertheless, it appears to function. As I touch the input panel, the alien substance reacts violently. I make a note to avoid getting closer. The device opens, revealing a single unblinking crimson eye. It prints out a blueprint for antimatter, accompanied by a strange message. Take the blueprint, blueprint and read the log. You will find us when the time is right. 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. And I've learned antimatter. So now I can make my own. 25 chromatic metal and 20 condensed carbon. Now we can make one. We're going to have to do that for the sake of doing the uh, uh, quest line. Let's pick up some stuff while we're here. Now it may take the two that I already have in my inventory. Yep, yep, it's, 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 it's all the antimatter in my inventory and it's making it part of the quest line. So I've achieved that. I do have to make some antimatter housing though. So that's our next thing. I think we picked up almost everything here. Let's go ahead and pick up. It's always good to pick up the stuff as you go. Later on in the game, when you got tons and tons of credits, you don't have to worry about it as much. So, craft a product, antimatter housing. Now, as we know, I've already got two antimatter, so I'm going to make a second one. And then, let's go over to the starship. Too far away. Back to the exosuit. Now I'm going to make a warp cell. But I need my antimatter. I'm too far away from the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm working on it. We'll come back to this in just a second. So, we're at the ship. We can craft the antimatter. Warp cells. One and two. I now have two warp cells. And I'm going to take them, and I'm going to put them in my hyperdrive. It gives me 50% charge with two of them. So, just keep that in mind. Alright. It says, launch into space to test your interstellar systems. So, I'm going to switch over to mining beam, and we're going to have some fun shall we so as soon as I take one of these whispering eggs the horrors are gonna jump out of the ground and try to attack me it's not as crazy as you think the first time you do this you're gonna be 
probably freaking out. But, you know, just keep moving. Get one at a time. Don't try to gather all the eggs in one shot. And work your way around the circumference of this and pick up eggs as you go. They're going to hit you once in a while. It doesn't do a lot of damage. So, here we go. Yep, I didn't get anything out of that. Alright, excuse me guys. Pardon me. Coming through. I'm going to walk over here. See? Whoop, hello. He stopped. I'm going to go around the other side real quick. And we're going to pick up this egg. See? Larval core. One. Take another one. Larval core. He's in there. There's two. Just keep going. He'll be fine. Three. Just keep going. I know it's kind of crazy. But, and if they do run into you, they just knock you for a little ways. Yeah, see? He spit at me. Hey, jerk. Mama told you not to spit at people. All right. I'm going to pick that one up. There's not a whole lot on this one. I've been places where I get 20 or 30 of these things. Just get used to doing it that way. Whoa, hello. See? Okay, let's go around the other side. He kind of hit me pretty hard. Uh, nope, nothing there. Wow, I'm getting... They're getting stingy with me here. There we go. Got it. This one. And got it. So you notice that they're not really killing me here. But you just have to be careful, that's all. I think there's only a couple left. Got it. I'm injured. It's no big deal. I think that's it. Is that all of them? I think that's it. Pretty sure. Yeah, that's all of it. Alright. Let's uh, escape them. And go up top. And we're done. So how many did we end up with? Uh, back to exosuit. Ten. And they're worth 700,000 units for one stack. Now, in some of these abandoned buildings, you'll find that you'll come away with almost three stacks of them. And that's worth a lot. I mean, think about it. You know, you're talking over two million if you can get three stacks. So that's very handy early game to get this kind of stuff. Uh, so I do suggest it. Now, if you take these, and I'll show you a little trick here. Um, let's... I'll show you what they mean about the refiners, okay? If I take one of those and put them in my refiner... I can get, um, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Oh, well, I have to put something in here. It gives me 50 nanites for one of these. You know, I, I know a lot of people like that, but I, I just can't do it. I used to do it sometimes in early game if I really, really couldn't find any of the animals on a planet, but I just learned later on that it was easier just to do this. I can find seven animals on this planet, uh, that one's on the other side of the hill. Are they still running around down there? After a while, they submerge. Okay, let's uh, find the biological entities here. So it's two. Oh, there's one right there. There's three. I got one over there. Probably have some in caves, I'm guessing. Uh oh. Ow. I'm hitting the wrong button. Ah, oh, crap, I'm not going to make it. Oh, I did. What do you know? someone over there that is moving pretty quick. Now be careful. Unpredictable steal some others. Okay. Doesn't look like he's an attacker. I'm going to keep looking around here. This is a really ugly planet. I really don't like this place. In my opinion, that is. So, how many do we get if we find everybody? We have four. We get 1,750 nanites if we can find everybody. We've got... One on the ground, one flying, and one underground that we have to get. And look, a tunnel. Toxicity's rising. Let me just run in here real quick. And just wait for a couple moments and just see if anything appears. There is. There's someone up there. That must be a ground-based guy. Yeah, that's not inside the tunnels at all. 
and a lot of the ones that are underground will appear at the entrance to the tunnel rather than deep inside. Not always, but they usually do. Let's go find this guy. Hmm. He's really close. I wonder where he is. Is that a tunnel base dude? He might be. Okay, they vanished. Fascinating. Okay, guess what we're doing. Oh, I almost had him. Got it. That's the underground dude. Am I right? Yep. So I got a flying one and a ground one. Takes some time, but it's worth doing, like I said. Oh, there's the ground one. I think he's dead. Oh, it is him. Good grief. Hmm, nice. That's a pretty cool creature. Alright, so any flying creatures out here? Sometimes you can get a hint onto the creature itself. Let me just check one more time. Uh, flying and diurnal. No, nothing special. All right, my ship is there. Creatures be creeping out and going crazy. Ah, I'd hate to leave the planet and not find the one flying creature. They always take... If they know you have, like, one to find, they always take longer to find that one. They try to make it as hard as possible for you to discover it. So... Uh, let me get 10,000. Yeah. Sorry, folks. I know this one a little longer, but we'll get this done here. And down we go. Okay. Look up again. Maybe we'll get fortunate and then they suddenly appear. That happens once in a while. Ah, come on. Really wish I just appear someplace. I'm going to try something. Tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and pause my video here so I'm not wasting any of your all's time, and I'm going to take a look and see if I can find that last creature. See you in a minute. Okay, we're back. I finally found the creatures. There we go. And there we go. And that's, there it is, number seven. So we've got our fauna. We got 1,750 nanites. There we go. Very handy. And I'll get the achievement as well. But we're going to go ahead and sell those things off. All right. So we're on our way. We are going to warp to another galaxy. I will land at the space station and sell off the things I was able to get. There it is. Discovered all the creatures on two planets. All right, so if you hit the X, you have your galaxy map now. You can select it, and now you can go to a new system. Now, the path that you're taking is to the galactic core. You can change that by um, hitting the right or left arrow buttons on your keyboard. 
So free explorer, galactic senate, free explorer, that's all you got so far. Later on you'll get other achievements that you can go by. So right now I can't do more than, you know, move do this. But if you hit the right clicker on your your right mouse button, you now have the ability to pan around and look around at all the stars around you. You don't have to take the path it's designating for you to go. You can go anywhere you want. But for the sake of this, I'm going to go ahead and go it. Now, one thing it tells you you can do is if you hit the R button on your keyboard, it'll give you data about it, but you have to have certain components installed on your ship to get the economy and conflict data for a system. Economy tells you how good the economy is there, of course. Conflict tells you what's the state of things over there. Are the pirates going nuts, or is it pretty serene and calm? It gives it on a scaling basis, and you'll be able to tell that. So this is a Viking system that we're going to be going to. Um, if we left click on it, it'll tell us that there are three planets. <coughs> and we're exiting hyperspace. New system. Now, am I discovering this system for the first time? Yes, it is. First contact. Imagine that. Millions of people playing this game, and you can still discover new systems. Scan the planet in front of us, just because. Frozen planet. Ah! Starship monitoring system. Reports error. Guidance system. Malfunction. Searching for other routes. Searching. Searching. Obtained. Destination in 16, 16, 16, 16. 16, 16. Accept new guidance. Um, I guess, but it is kind of creepy. Guidance accepted. Plotting route. And we should get a fuel source detected. Now, before we head there, which is to this lovely planet over here, we're going to scan it, but we are going to head to the space station. A quagmire planet. And no, we're not talking about a character from a famous TV show. Now, if I go back to my ship, I can determine that I've got... Well, of course, I'm getting a hostile scan. Hey, you want to fight some pirates, folks? I think we're ready. Let's do it. Yep. Let's fight some pirates. See, the red... They're going to appear right over there. All right. So, this is randomized. You may not always get this. Follow the red trail, you'll find the pirate. Sometimes there's more than one ship. This happens to be one. You can see they have a shield. I'm about ready to take it down. I'm usually a little better than this, but... Shield down, damage to the ship, and goodbye, my friend. And that is an item you can pick up. Excellent, right? And you see your, your standing is increased with the Viking by two every time you defeat pirates. So very handy. Um, let's see where the third planet is. So we've discovered this planet. That's where we're going to be heading next. Let's scroll around. Uh, we've got this planet here we discovered. And there's another one right here that we have not been to. Uh, let's hit see. Looks like they got a moon in front of it too. So it's a damp planet. Now if we can get to the moon... Oh. It's kind of hard to focus on it. There we go. Dang it. Okay, let's see if we can get it again. The moon. Oh my gosh, it's a paradise moon. Well, isn't that special? That is really handy. It's pretty far away, though, so keep that in mind. So before I go there, we're probably going to build a new base on that moon. I like having a paradise moon a lot. problem with some of the paradise planets, as great as they are, occasionally you run across them where they have really a, they have some species that like to attack you so you have to be careful but we're going to end the episode here on this space station i'm going to show you just a couple quick things let me jump back out the third person thank you for staying with me this long 
Okay, exit the ship. We now have access to the space station. Now, if we hit F and we look at the space station, it tells us dominant life form economy is construction and booming. This will be considered a tier three system, folks. So that means money and items are going to be at a premium. They're going to be really, really good. However, conflict level is perilous, hence the reason why we were attacked by pirates. So let's go up here to the trade terminal. And take a look at what they got in the inventory, huh? So you're going to notice that there's a lot more of certain things. Cobalt, they have 587. You notice the metal plates, they have 156 rather than a paltry 30 or 40. Microprocessors, 176. We've got a good amounts of items here. This is a good system to be part of. Um, ferrite dust, they have pyrite, which is very handy for recharging your... Um, uh, Pulse drive, as I said earlier. We're going to sell. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my larval cores, which I'm getting a minus 3.3% demand on it. It's okay, but I'm getting 675,000. I'm going to go ahead and take it. Um, I don't need projectiles yet. I'll just go ahead and get rid of them to free up inventory space. Um, the rest of the stuff I'm going to keep because I need all these things. I can go to my starship inventory and sell stuff. Like I can sell the emerald for a pretty good, decent chunk. Um, but, you know, I kind of need it. So I'm going to hang on to it. Uh, and I never did check out my suspicious packet. Let's take a look. What is this? If we open it, we got an energy lattice. We have to dismantle it. And that gave us silver. 75, not really much. You notice it's only 186 units for silver. Chlorine is still worth more. <laughs> we'll hang on to the silver now. we got plenty of inventory space. I'll sell it when I need to. So... That's where we're going to end up this episode right now. I'm going to go ahead and save where we're at. Um, just want to show you the, the portal real quick, the station terminus. If I go there now, I now have access to my base, but I also have access to... I should have access to the space station I came from at the other location. For some reason, I don't. I think that's part of the um, storyline is preventing it right now, but you should have access to both space stations. So... Um, real quick, let's take a look over here. I'm sure you're curious too to see what they have. I'm going to go ahead and get my exosuit up to snuff. Um, what am I getting? Oh, because I made 2 million units now in Magnate, so I've achieved the maximum level of that one. Okay, well, let's upgrade my exosuit. Um, let me see. I'm going to go ahead and keep upgrading cargo. I don't need to really worry about technology yet. You notice it's only uh, 5,000 units, so it's worth it. What do they have here? Let's see what they've got. i got over 5,000, so nanite clusters, blah, 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 purchase. Do I have anything to sell? I don't think so. Yeah, okay. And here's our S-Class. We've got radiation, we have thermal on cold, and we have a movement upgrade. Ooh, I'd like to get that. We have shield, we have fire, and we have water. I'm going to go for the movement. they got a lot of S-Class upgrades here. This is really handy. So let's go ahead and get the movement module. Um, I don't need anything for those. Let's see what kind of ship upgrades. We'll go ahead and grab this encrypted nav navigation. Okay, we get some nanites out of it. Starship research. Let's see what they got. Uh, cyclotron, useless. Launch thrusters, that's actually very handy to have that. Ooh, they have the infra knife one here. <sighs> oh, I'm very happy now. Very, very happy. All right, yeah, this is definitely a system I want to hang out in. Okay, I am going to get the launch thrusters. I don't need the infra knife yet until I can build it, so I'll worry about that later. And last but not least, what kind of a... Uh, Mark X, C-Class, nothing special. It's got more room. It's got one overcharged slot, but you know what? I'm not really interested in that. Maybe there'll be a better one on, the planet some, on one of the planets someplace. Uh, research, blah, blah, blah. We got a bolt caster upgrade. That's it. I'm going to go ahead and take it. I normally wouldn't, but I do kind of... I've got a bolt caster on my unit right now, and I do want to get it up to a little bit higher level. So here's my upgrades. Let's go ahead and upgrade this. Okay, we're going to put it in this caddy corner here, and it's giving me a 200% increase on jetpack. Um, so it's got a kind of nice. It's not quite as good as this one, but it's pretty good. Um, so that's going to give me some really good distance. Uh, launch thrusters. Let's go ahead and upgrade my launch thrusters. There's my launch thruster. We'll put it there. So that's going to give me a launch cost of minus 20% and a plus 9 boost as we take off. So very, very nice. And then finally, the bolt caster upgrade. I think we've got room. 
I don't have the bowcaster. Why don't I have the bowcaster? I thought I had the bowcaster. Nope, I don't have the bowcaster. I must be mistaken. All right, well, I've got it for now. I'll hang on to it for the time being. We'll get it later. There's another trade terminal in here, if you guys ever wondered about that. You've seen me go to a couple of them. Sometimes those trade terminals can offer different items than the main trade terminal. So you'll see the same kind of things, usually slightly lesser amounts, but you see they've got carbon nanotubes. And usually when you get to this area, they'll have different items. So I can get more pyrite, but they've also got chlorine here and magnetized ferrite if I want it don't need it at this time so anywho that's where we're gonna end up right now um, some decent upgrades we got a pretty decent system we're gonna be building a base here later um, but for now we're gonna call it quits I'm gonna go in here and save it real quick and let's do a classic wave shall we and say so long Thank you very much for joining us. Hit the like button if you liked the episode, and of course any comments, I always welcome. Bye, folks.